Hey, I'm Julian, and I've spent the last four years designing and building this stupid instrument for my punk band from Canada called Inhalants. The point of it is to be an all-in-one device that uses a Game Boy from the 90s as a sound source. It also controls all our song changes and effects for my vocals. It instructs our homemade light rigs and stage visuals, and probably some other stuff that I forgot. In episode 10, which was previous, we went over my prototype for the Game Boy module, which is one of several main assemblies. Since we're getting closer to the final design, I need to test all of the modules and the signal path and the fit of everything to make sure it all works before I commit to the final build with the final materials. I originally designed this stupid thing with the intention of using half-inch plastic sheets, but when I found out it was going to be more than 100 pounds if I did that, I had to switch to plywood. The problem is that the plywood I want to use doesn't come in exact half inches, it comes in 12 millimeters. Metric is obviously a better system than this filthy imperial fraction nonsense anyway, but it means I have to go through the whole design and adjust everything by 0.7 millimeters because a half inch is 12.7 millimeters. So I did that. It took way too long, much like the rest of this project. Once I got done with that, uh, I got to work on the contents of this lower tray area. There's going to be quite a few items that I need to be always with me when I'm using the Lame Boy at a show. One thing I definitely need to include is a small portable soldering station and some other specific tools because inevitably I'm going to have to fix something when we're playing live or when one of you idiots throws me through the lame boy into the drum set. I also need my vocal mic and some cables uh, to connect everything that I need to connect. So I designed these little drawers to slide out and stay in place with magnets. It's tough designing moving parts because as someone who's just making all this shit up as I go, I have no idea how to determine what kind of tolerances I need to make something that's able to move nicely without rattling. I don't know if I'm supposed to just make the whole part and then try it or what. I am sure there's a better way, but that's a problem for a future Julian. It usually sucks to be that guy. But at least moving these parts in the software is pretty fun. Secondly, inside of the main console, there's going to be a little mini Lenovo computer. And that's going to instruct a lot of the devices and work in tandem with the Game Boy. And I need a way to control that computer. So I created this little compartment to make a sliding keyboard. Now, again, the whole design philosophy with this project is sort of like... What if the mother computer on the Nostromo in Alien was designed by Nintendo in the 80s? So I took a little more inspo from the movie for the keyboard design and uh, also my original Macintosh. Uh, if you don't know about the glory of mechanical keyboards, then the keyboard that you're using right now is dog shit and you should throw it out. Back in the golden days before I was born and when we had some self-respect, the switches in these old computer keyboards used mechanical parts with like springs and lubricant and they were powered by combustion engines manufactured by Ford. The keyboard you're using, if you're a filthy casual, uses a squishy piece of rubber that you press down onto a circuit board. It's like typing in a bowl of snails compared to a mechanical keyboard. So. There's a big culture of mechanical keyboards for modern computers, so that's what we're gonna use for this to keep in line with the historical nature of uh, the props in Alien. Obviously, I don't wanna build a keyboard from scratch though. This has already taken long enough, so I bought this little keyboard called the Ann Pro 2. It's what's called a 60% keyboard because it's roughly 60% of the size of a full-size keyboard. I chose that because it has to fit in this space that was already here because this keyboard thing is kind of an afterthought. Fortunately, it fits almost exactly, and because the mechanical keyboard community is full of delightful nerds, there's very accurate 3D models of cases on sites like GrabCAD or Thingiverse, so I don't have to do any of the measurements or modeling myself in order to incorporate it into my design and adjust it slightly to fit. And the other fantastic thing about mechanical keyboards is that there are tons of options for replacement keycaps to fit the look that I want. So to try to be accurate to the Alien keyboard from the one or two shots we actually get of it, it looks like they use what's called XDA profile keycaps, which are all the same size and are flat on top instead of the kind on standard keyboards that um, is actually a slightly different shape on each horizontal row. So 
Uh, I got these keycaps. They were cheap, 30 bucks. And the link is in the description for those. This is not sponsored. I wish I was sponsored by these $30 keycaps. What took me a couple hours, you get to see in three seconds with this cool time lapse that I made. And here's some dramatic cinema shots of the keyboard. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll keep these keycaps. Um, we'll have to see what they look like against the final color that I go with for everything because it'll depend on the exact gray pigment that I use. Here's the 3D print with the dimension adjusted by about one millimeter to fit exactly in my design. And I printed it at my local library, which has a makerspace with 3D printers and stuff. It's not even a big town, so yours might actually have that too, which is pretty cool. And it's made prototyping this stuff pretty easy. So it actually took me a long time to figure out how to do this drawer properly um, and this little flappy piece. My worry with this whole assembly of the drawers and the keyboard flap is that they have to be functional, but also they're one of the primary aesthetic features of the front of the whole machine. So they have to look good and still work. If they don't sit in place really precisely, I'm gonna be really annoyed. So I'm gonna have them centered with magnets. One thing I have to be really conscious of when I'm designing anything really, is you have to understand the limitations of the tool that you're gonna use. So in this case, with the enclosure, I'm using a CNC router. The good thing about the CNC router is it's extremely precise, like two fractions of a millimeter. The problem is I can only cut into the surface of a sheet of wood. There's not really any great way with the CNC to cut into the edge of a piece of wood. So to get around that in the many places I'm gonna have to drill into the edge of these boards, I'm gonna be using the precision of the CNC to make these jigs, which will then guide my hand drill through the holes into the edge. This jig here that I designed slides in place over this specific edge and has holes where I need them exactly the size of the drill bit I'll use. So it's the perfect way to mark where the holes are gonna go. And then I have an idea for a really simple 3D printed edge drilling jig to keep my drill straight once the placement's accurate. So I can rely on the precision of these tools to guide my imprecise hand drill, and hopefully that'll work the way I want it. So this way the magnets in this edge here should line up properly with the corresponding holes on the flaps and the drawers, and then keep things nicely and beautifully in place once they're closed. One thing that makes the project feel extra absurd is that I know that a lot of the problems I'm solving on my own have already been solved and optimized by real engineers in real industries. But I just lack the ability to even formulate some of the questions I need to ask because of my ignorance. And I, because of a lack of experience, I also don't know where to look for a lot of these problems. It's hard to describe not knowing how to ask a question. But I'm sure you've been in that situation where you can see that there's a problem, but you don't even know who to ask or how to ask a question because all the words or concepts you need are not available in your head. I really often find myself at this crossroads where I have to decide if it's gonna be faster to spend two days doing the research on a particular solution to a common problem or a very specific engineering problem, or if it's gonna be faster just to solve the problem myself, even if it's a worse solution and actually takes longer than it would have if I had done the research and just done the proper solution. So for example, when I was deciding on how to design this hinge system, I spent a bunch of time trying to figure out how to do it with these complicated European style hinges that would make it lift out with this complex action. And I even posted a long thread on Reddit asking engineers what they would do. And sometimes when you ask questions to experienced people, the people answering assume that just by virtue of the fact that you're asking, you have a good reason why you didn't just go with a simpler option that seems obvious to them. So they validate the ignorance of my question because they're assuming I'm, I know more than I do. You understand what I'm trying to say? I posted this whole thing and had this long conversation and people were participating in the discussion. And then one guy was like, instead of trying to find the right hinge for this complex action that you designed, why don't you just change the motion action so that it works with a very available hinge, like a piano hinge that cost me $12 and is really easy to design for. 
So I spent three days trying to solve this stupid hinge problem, and the answer was that the problem wasn't worth solving in the first place. But I think that's a normal process. The best part is no part. First principles. I don't know what I'm talking about. I hope that was uh, interesting, or at least didn't make your day worse. I hope that your day is either the same or better for having watched the video. You can find our music on everything, but it's linked in the description. Maybe check out some of the previous episodes in the series if you're interested in this build. Thanks for buying an Inhalants t-shirt, and I'll see you on the next one where I might try to make a circuit board without losing my mind because it's really fucking confusing so far. So, see ya.